going on guys today we are back and we are back at work on the third generation Toyota 4Runner build brought to you in part by Alpine Toyota so last week we got hard at work on this thing getting it completely stripped down pretty well getting it ready to lift the body off the frame but before we are ready to do that this cab needs some work, starting with the floors. And really, what I mean by that is actually fixing this seat mount hole here that we discovered last week. Luckily, I've held on to this parts Corolla over here. Because check it out, if we look at its driver's seat mount here, it's got a pretty good flat surface around it that I can cut out and uh, weld it into place on the forearm. That'll work perfect. Woo, hot. And right there is the piece cut out. That should work perfect. Next up, kind of trim around it and then cut out the rust here. Welder into place there. Boom. Check out that patch. Time to weld that sucker up. That rust hole is officially patched. Let's grab the driver's seat and uh, give it a test fit. Make sure everything lines up. All right, and as you can see, that guy is lined up there. The back ones are both lined up here. And safe to say, this is a successful repair. All right, so after I finished welding this thing together last night, I used the same rubberized texture coating that I used on the floor of my Toyota pickup after the fire repair to then seal up all that bare metal. And because I really like the result that I got from covering the floor of my Toyota pickup with this uh, rubberized texture coating, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this. Now, because that's the only spot I could find that needed to be repaired, Next up for me to do is uh, just to get sandpaper and scuff up everything. <laughs>
Well, now that the floors are essentially done, the next thing I planned on doing was actually repairing these rocker panels here while it was still on this frame. Unfortunately, I just went to the auto parts store and new rocker panels for this thing are like over six weeks away. And because I'm super impatient and want to keep moving on this project, I guess let's remove this body from this frame. Hopefully all the body mount bolts and stuff don't give me a hard time. I'm honestly kind of surprised. Not a single body bolt gave me an issue. See, you don't need a hoist or fancy tools to do major automotive work here. We just need four used oil drums from Canadian Tire and some good 2 by 4s In all seriousness though, I have done this before with these exact drums before, um, with worse 2 by 4s And last time, the 4Runner had all its doors and a full interior and was significantly heavier. So I do trust this setup. A heck of a lot more and I mean it's only temporary I'm hoping to have this back on that frame sooner than later so now that I've got the frame separated here I'm actually noticing a few small maybe small <laughs> um, differences here look here right in the middle of those two body mounts that one there and that one there nothing if we go over to this frame there's a whole extra body mount right there and another difference I'm noticing, the front frame horn. They're different. <laughs> it does not look the same as this one. And one of the major reasons I'm choosing to even use a completely different frame is because of the front section of the frame here, where the frame horn is tweaked. The whole front of this frame is slightly tweaked from a front end collision at some point in its life. And look at, like, look at the rust. Uh, there's a lot of sections on this frame that have... There we go. There. This is why I'm using that frame. With that being said, I'm going to measure this frame at all of the body mounts and double check that that body is going to work on this frame. So I was right, all of the body mounts, except for the one that does not exist on that frame, all measure out to be in the exact same location. So that means I'm going to cut this guy off, and then continue prepping this frame.
and just like that, that body mount is gone. Now, because the weather has been so temperamental and like raining every single day and it's supposed to keep raining through the week, I think I'm gonna do this in section. I've got this whole section here all grinded down to essentially bare steel. So I think to protect it from becoming flash rusted or anything like that, I'm going to put down a layer of 415 right in this area here, kind of like I've already done on the rear like two years ago. My favorite part about using Pore 15 is it essentially makes the frame look brand new after. It looks, oh, there's the rain, right on cue. Oh yeah, glad I did that. She's mostly dry now. But uh, yeah, imagine I just had a let down to bare steel, rain, instantly rested again. No good. Yeah, it's starting to really come down now, but you can see the water is feeding off of this. So uh, that's good news. So I managed to get half the frame pretty well done here. And I found the trick to getting the paint and rust off is this wire wheel on the grinder. It makes super quick work of this. And yeah, while well, we got another break from the weather, I'm gonna try to hammer out this side here. All right, well, I got cut a little short earlier due to the weather again. It started raining. Uh, but before it started raining, I did get most of this sanded back down. You can see actually where it's rusting <laughs> from where I exposed the bare metal. But before it rains again overnight, I'm gonna dry this off the best I can and then put down the layer of 415. And here we have pretty well a finished frame. So as I was talking about earlier in the video, I painted the entire frame with Pore 15. And if you don't know what that is, it is paint over rust 15, I guess. And it seems to be what like everybody uses on frames and stuff like this. It essentially makes like a hard rock finish, not allowing anything through, sealing off all the existing rust that is there, not allowing it to get any more moisture and spread any further. Yeah, I just read that off the internet, but hey, I know it works. I've used it on my pickup before and the stuff just looks awesome. Anyways, guys, that about wraps up this week's episode of Dirt Garage and thanks for watching. If you can do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button and hey, consider subscribing. I upload weekly Toyota, building, wheeling, and off-roading content. Anyways, I'll see you next week peace yeah let's go i'ma make a couple stacks do exactly what i want to mix a couple tracks get a lady that i'm drawn to turn up to the max get me faded till i'm gone dude i do what i want couldn't stop me if you wanted to i just work hard yeah harder than the rest some people say i'm lucky others saying that